All right. Regular viewers will remember a video where I replaced the voltage regulator uh, probably a month or so ago, just before I went back to Ontario for a bit. So, yeah, a month or so ago. Because I had a problem where the alternator gauge inside the car was uh, pinned to the right. And so I had that happen once before. The most likely cause of that is a failing voltage regulator, which means that the alternator puts out way too much current for the battery to deal with and overloads all the circuits and, you know, stuff happens. On my way home, I think it was uh, Wednesday night of this week, in basically the same place that I'd seen it the last time, although I think that that was relatively coincidental, because I remember the first time I'd seen it, even when I let off the throttle a bit, it wouldn't it wouldn't let off on the gauge. It just kind of stayed pinned. So when I saw it being a little bit more dynamic, uh, I pulled over in the same place I did, uh, you know, two months ago or whatever when I'd first seen it, turned the car off. Uh, I didn't have a voltmeter with me, which is very unfortunate because it, it would have told me a few things about how much the alternator, like when it was happening, how much the alternator was actually feeding the battery and, and whether there was an overvolt, uh, over over amperage so there would have been a lot of things to learn about that but I didn't have one so I pulled over um, where I had last time witnessed it still happening turned the car off turned it back on uh, which is what kind of made it go away the last time prior to me putting in that voltage regulator anyway I saw it happen again uh, but because I got home easily the previous time I thought well you know maybe there's something else lingering and maybe that wasn't the entire fix so essentially, I just said, screw it, I'll, you know, I'll make it home. I knew I would. Um, the other thing I was hearing that same day was essentially, you know, maybe one of the mounts had come off of the, uh, you know, muffler clamps or whatever. I could tell the tailpipe was still firmly attached, but uh, whenever I was revving up and in low RPM or whatever, I was hearing a rattle and a, a, something bumping against the frame of the car or the, yeah, frame. So that concerned me a little bit as well. But of course, you know, I had these two problems and I wasn't sure which one to worry about. So I just said, screw it, I'll get home. Uh, when I got home, I kind of rattled things around with, you know, I grabbed something with the pliers and that and made sure that the tailpipe wasn't going to fall off and that the muffler wasn't going to immediately fall off. And when I started up the car, at least briefly, when I had the multimeter out, it wasn't pinned the same way. So I thought, well, that sucks. Uh, you know, I, I lost my chance to figure out what might be going on there. Anyway, I got in the morning, like I say, a little bit late, and uh, I just said, fuck it, right? Um, I've, I've ignored my intuition before, and in almost every case, when uh, the back of my brain is telling me, hey, idiot, don't do that, uh, if I'm feeling cocky or whatever, or just lazy, I ignore it. And so I ignored it, and I got halfway into work, and I started to smell smoke, and um, the thing was still pinned, you know, completely. I put my hand up to the alternator gauge and it was hot to the touch and uh, that gauge was busy melting and started to see smoke uh, coming out of the steering column and all that so anyway I just thought okay screw it that we're, I'm not making it into work this, this is it and uh, of course I looked over and uh, because I had been out working on the Merc a little bit and I wanted a fire extinguisher with me I didn't put it back into the Valiant so <laughs> it's like okay if this thing starts catching fire then you know we're gonna have a fire. So I pulled over to the side of the road and I, I pulled over at a place that I'm very familiar with because I look in on it every day. There's lots of cars in the driveway. The guy's obviously car friendly. <clears throat> I've met him once or twice, just very briefly. But anyway, I just thought I'll pull over here. I'll put a little note on the dash and say electrical problem and, uh, you know, I'm arranging a tow for later. So that's what I did. I, you know, I, I arranged a BCA tow and uh, I had Kara come and pick me up at work in the 66 yesterday. And, uh, yeah, got the, got on the tow truck, came in with the tow guy and we dropped it off at the house here. So a number of years ago now, I did a repair on my 1964 Chrysler Windsor, which is one of those big four door boats. And it had a very, very similar thing, but in that case it failed completely. Suddenly I went out to start it up just to warm it up a bit. And, um, as soon as I turned the key, I didn't even smell it. It was so quick. It just burned right through the wire and, um, I had no lights, no power, no nothing, and that's where this one ended up at. Interestingly enough, I even restarted the car, you know, after the smoke, just to make sure that perhaps if I had to back it out to get it on a trailer or something like that later in the day, you know, I just thought, does it have it in it to even just move 10 feet? 
and uh, had done so, and uh, that was fine. And you know, I knew I wasn't going to run it for very long, given the whole temperature thing. So I turned it off and then went to work on the bus, and uh, came back later. Like I say, when Kara picked me up in the '66, I know where to start looking. Um, but in this case, I might actually take the steering column apart because that's where I saw the smoke. And uh, in the old 64, there was no real electronics in the steering column at all. It was all, uh, you know, behind the behind the um, the gauge cluster and all that. So uh, I might have to dig a little bit deeper on this one, but I have a feeling it's going to be a very similar failure to what I've already repaired. So if anybody's interested in the 1964 Chrysler version of that repair, I think I did make a video be about three years ago or so. Um, yeah, about a year before I sold it, maybe, and uh, so I can't remember how in-depth it is, but it, it at least describes the Dodge Chrysler problem that they, you know, did from the late 50s right on through to the late 70s, I think, or maybe even the early 80s trucks. So it is a, it is a fix that's going to be necessary. I don't know if my 66 has this fix in it, but uh, if it hasn't been done, I will be doing this again, so... <laughs> Anyway, I will, we'll talk soon, and uh, this is just a little bit of an intro, and hopefully I haven't bored everybody. Thanks. Talk soon. Bye.